I'm your host with the most welcome 23 year dreaming for Desire and Decorum First Winter Chapter 1 Deck the Holes! Sun rises over the glistening snow covered grounds of Edgewater, a state on the morning before Christmas. The bright light filtering into the window gently stirs you awake. You rub the sleep from your eyes just as you turn to find Mr. Sinclair still fast asleep beside you. Ernest, how could it be possible that we are already about to celebrate our first Christmas together? Though only if you wake up. I should wake him up with a whisper to the ear, jostles and shouting, a sweet kiss. Lean down, smoothing Mr. Sinclair's hair with one hand as you press a gentle kiss to his lips, lingering there until you feel Mr. Sinclair begin to smile. I hate to wake you, but you were simply too tempting to resist. His arms come around you, cradling you close. I will never complain of being awoken by your lips. Good morning, my wife. How time has flown by to think that our very first Christmas together is less than a day away. I am just as excited as you are, my love. I wonder whether anyone could rival my enthusiasm for Christmas. It's simply so cheerful and heartwarming. But the gift I have for you will only add to that enjoyment, but you will have to wait to see what it is. You got me a gift. You're not but a tease. Why tell me at all if you didn't plan to give me the gift now? Because I wish to see you squirm with curiosity and anticipation. I knew it. I wonder if there is any consolation prize you can offer, since you insist on taunting me so. As Claire presses a brief kiss to the tip of your nose, my love will have to be consolation enough. Glance the door of your bedroom and groan. I'm suddenly feeling the urge to spend the entire day here in your arms, but we should get ready for the day ahead. I know what you mean, but alas, you're right. Reluctantly, Mr. Sinclair pushes back the blankets and moves the wardrobe to dress while you watch. Once he finishes, he turns to you. You're looking, as they say, dapper. My husband looks ever so dashing, bundled in his winter jacket. I'm pleased you like it. It was a gift from Miss Dally. She made one for Mr. Sinclair, Miss Parsons, and Prince Hamid as well. Cannot wait to see them later, but first I must get ready myself. You should hurry on to breakfast without me. Very well. Just one thing first. As Sinclair kisses your forehead and disappears through the bedroom door, moments later, Briar appears in the doorway, flushed and out of breath. Bella, you've also cut the window. Have you seen it? It snowed all night. The first snow of the season, and on Christmas Eve. Rush to the window and see Edgewater blanketed in a thick layer of snow. The morning sunlight glistens off the white expanse. It's beautiful, but I cannot think about that now. There are more pressing matters at hand. What could possibly more be more pressing than fresh snow? I don't know, life? Coffee? Mr. Sinclair has a Christmas present waiting for me, but I haven't gotten him anything yet. I've been looking for the perfect thing, but how could any gift encapsulate my love and excitement for our first Christmas? Christmas shopping on the day before Christmas. Oh, you are just... no. It has to be... <clears throat> into the future, I want to build with him. It's our first Christmas together, and it will set a precedent for all future Christmases to come. It must be perfect. Well, then there is only one thing to do. We must go into more filled ones. I have some last-minute shopping to do as well. Don't order the carriage for us. Wait! You can't leave the house in your nightgown. And don't try to scamper off in your short sleeves either, unless you want to catch your death. Mr. Sinclair would never forgive me if, after all you've been through, the weather finally defeated you. Here we are, standing over Bella's grave. <laughs> 32 degrees snow, Tucker! Oh, God! I take it you have just the thing for the occasion. As a matter of fact, Mama has been teaching me some things since she arrived at Edgewater for the holidays. We made this gift for you. Retrieves a parcel from the hallway and hides the twine, building it, finding it shut, revealing a thick white dress with a vibrant red cloak and a matching red fur red trim bonnet. Let it snow, let it snow, it looks halfway decent, but didn't you know that a lot of the skin colors and people and faces and hair they didn't copy over from Desire and Decorum, and people are triggered and I don't blame them. <clears throat> oh, it looks even lovelier than I hope. Your sewing talents are coming along very nicely, Briar. You certainly take after your mother in that regard. 
This ensemble is just as lively as it is practical, and the fur is ever so soft against my skin. I'm elated to hear it. I was extremely worried I couldn't live up to my mom's abilities after she returned to Gravashire. Rest assured that you have nothing to worry about. Now come on, Moorfield won't wait forever. You know, you, you want to make my uh, holiday season, folks? Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. You and Briar head downstairs and step out into the winter wonderland. You're drawn to a deep breath of fresh, crisp air as Briar gleefully catches a snowflake on her tongue. It is uh, cold and wet, and I surely slip and crack my head open. You wrinkle your nose at the falling snow, and Briar rolls her eyes dramatically. I know you're a curmudgeon in the winter, but can you not allow me to bask in the joy of snow? I'm the Grinch. You don't feel so joyous when you're nursing a broken ankle. Briar grabs your gloved hand and pulls you towards the carriage, but you spin when you hear a familiar voice shout from behind. Wait! Wait for me! Races towards you, clutching her shawl, then nearly slips on the fresh snow as she skids to a halt. See? Miss Sutton, whatever is the matter... <clears throat> you cannot go into Moorfield without me! I still have not finished my gift for Viscount Harry, and I ran out of supplies! Well, that is a good thing we have plenty of room in the carriage. The groom helps you, Briar, and Miss Sutton in the carriage, and then off to town you go. You step out of the carriage to find Moorfield covered in nearly as much snow as Edgewater. A perfectly magical Christmas Eve, even though five seconds ago you were griping. You hurry into a nearby curio shop with Briar and Miss Sutton. As you browse the shelves, you hear Miss Sutton mutter to herself while rifling through the knickknacks. No, oh, not red enough, not thick enough. Oh, what's this? Miss Sutton, whatever are you in such a panic over Viscount Harry's present? I just wanted to be the absolute best. Viscount Harry mentioned having a surprise for me, but would give me any details. Mr. Sinclair said the very same thing to me this morning. What do you think Viscount Harry is planning? I would wager it's a proposal. Miss Sutton drops the spool of thread she was holding. Her eyes wide, she grips your shoulders tight. Do you really, truly, honestly think so? I can't be certain, but I have seen the way he looks at you. He's positively smitten. I've noticed it too. I don't see why he would wait any longer to make it official. But I could never hope to get him the gift that would compare. Uh, you needn't worry about that. If my guess is true, the best gift you could offer is uh, to answer yes. I bet the Viscount Harry surprises a, a visitor. The fur servants have been setting up a room for someone, but... No one knows who. Even I don't know. He wouldn't reveal it when he asked if it was alright. We all know how well it worked out last time Viscount Harry invited someone without telling you. Yes, but things are different now. All of that is in the past and is well, and my true, truly my brother is now. Well, whatever it is, I hope it's marvelous and as marvelous as these... A sudden pulls a nearly completed pair of knit socks from with embroidered embellishments from a rectangle, holding them out with a proud smile. Yeah, those need some work. Are those... My gift for Fiscount Harry. They even match your cloak, Countess Bella. Um, so they do. I suppose Fiscount Harry and I will have more than just a familiar rem resemblance now. They look like they were made with great deal of care, Miss Sutton. Yes, they're very, um, <clears throat> thoughtful. What's the pattern on the ankle? Isn't it obvious it's a duck? The Viscount Harry's favorite animal. I don't look like a penguin. Kind of. It is clearly once... Uh, it would be more clearly once I purchase the rest of the yarn and finish the embroidery. The sudden turns to use the yarn selection. You and Briar's return to the shelves of various sundries. I still have to find something for Mama. Perhaps something related to sewing for your mother? Ah, yes. She's been wishing for a lace maker's lamp so that she can begin to create lace by her own hand. If they don't have one here, surely the tailor shop will be of use. That just leaves Mr. Sinclair. Your eyes eventually settle on a box of plain glass ornaments. You pick up a gl orb of gleamy, translucent red and hold it to the light. I have a delightful idea. I can get this, and Mr. Sinclair and I can spend the evening painting it together. The biggest gift of all is... ...as not being sick. But if you want to give me a gift, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe! Time spent together.
But wait, there's more! There's a Samsung LED TV 70 inch! Buy it from Mr. Sinclair! I mean, what? Even if the tur ornament turns out terrible, we still have the laughter and conversation that will accompany its creation. Surely what Mr. Sinclair wants most of all is just to be with you. So in your shopping complete, you, Brian, and Miss Sutton head back out into the snow. As you walk back to your carriage, you pass through the town square where Mr. Sinclair suddenly rushes up to you. Billy, you disappeared this morning. I've been looking everywhere for you. My apologies. Miss Nellie and Miss Sutton asked me to accompany them into town for some last-minute shopping. I must say, you look incredibly stunning in that ensemble and warm, too. I'm glad you approve. Miss Dally made it herself. Perhaps I should have come in to her later, after keeping you warm myself. Ernest, I will expect you to live up to that promise. No, you said you were looking for me? You're just here in time. Miss Constance has asked everyone to join in for some caroling in front of the trees. She was hoping you would join. We both were. In that case, I would love to join. <clears throat> Behind Mr. Sinclair, you see Miss Parsons, Miss Sir Luke, and Pensamine gathered around a massive pine tree decorating the square. Miss Cordelia sticks out her tongue, Miss, Miss Constance. We do caroling every year, sister. Can we not try to make in my way for once? New lyrics would be inspired. We do it every year because it's tradition. Does that mean nothing to you? If you couldn't tell, I'm struggling with voices today because I have a frog in my throat and I'm coughing a bunch. But moving on. Well, no, not really. Miss Constance glares at her sister, who hangs her head and steps back in a line beside the other. Miss Constance ushers you and Mr. Sinclair to do the same. Miss Constance takes her place before the group and holds out her hand for quiet. You notice Mr. Chambers and Mr. Kneevy wander in the square and stop to watch. All right, one, two, three. Oh, God, help me. I'm going to do this really slow and arguing like painful for all of you. Deck the halls. With boughs of holly. La 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 la. Kill me. <laughs> Tis the season to be. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm allergic to Christmas caroling. Miss Constance beams with pride as your voices meld together in a lively chorus. Let's over and see Miss Const Miss Cordelia beaming as well. La 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 la. As you signal. As you're singing the final verse, a snowball flies through the air and hits Miss Constance in the side of the head. Gets around and notice the snow on Miss Cordelia's mittens and the smirk on her lips. I don't think I didn't see that. Miss Constance quickly gathers her own snowball to lob at Miss Cordelia, and soon an all-out war has erupted. Fight! Count begin! So Luke hesitates to join the fray until a false snowball flies through the air directly towards Miss Cordelia. He lunges in front of her and the snow crashes against his jacket. Sir Luke, you save me! Mr. Sinclair also hangs at the edges until Mr. Knevey's assault slips past Mr. Chambers and hits him Mr. Sinclair in the face. Oh, you won't get away with that. When laughs and smiles as the battle rages on, Mr. Sinclair runs up to you with breathless. Aren't you going to join us, Bella? I can't fight in this battle without you. Worry not, Mr. Sinclair, I am a Super Saiyan! I would never abandon you in the hour of need, Mr. Sinclair. But first, duck. And Mr. Sinclair dropped to your knees, just narrowly missing the chili onslaught. <coughs> Who threw that? Glides up and followed the snowball's path to none other than Briar. She sticks out her tongue at you. Surely you can be faster than that. Let us test your speed, Miss Dally. Mr. Sinclair hastily packs a snowball and mobs it at her direction. Briar makes a duck. Makes you a duck, and but the snowball squarely hits her shoulder. Oh! Come now, Briar. Keep your eyes open. Before you say another word, the Briar darts off and takes cover behind one of the trees. You survey the field and catch sight of Miss Parsons hiding behind another tree. Sir Luke kneels beside Miss Cordelia, stacking snowballs beside her like cannon fodder. Keep them coming, Sir Luke. We must wear them down. Behind them, Prince Hamid stuffs a third snowball into his bulging coat and climbs a nearby tree. We've lost Mr. Chambers and Mr. Knevey. What do you think they're plotting? You turn back to Mr. Sinclair and see Miss Constance sneaking up from behind. Look out! Mr. Sinclair spins around and retaliates against Miss Constance. He lobs a snowball at her, sending her retreating towards her sister. Thank you, Bellum. I would have been snow-covered if not for you. This is absolute chaos. It's delightful. 
but I think it's time you joined into the fray. Mr. Sinclair holds up an expertly crafted snowball cupped in his palm. Hmm, who deserves an icy retribution? Ah, the choice is yours, but be careful. Whoever you make an enemy of here will surely want their revenge. Quickly, there's Mr. Richards! I mean... I'm gonna pick the loner. She's all alone. Get her! Because that's bullying mentality! You throw your snowball at Miss Constance as she sneaks up behind Mr. Sinclair for the second bloody time. Pardon me? Mrs. Sinclair, now on alert, spins and lobs his own snowball at Miss Constance, crashes into her leg, and she yelps in outrage before turning to you with a glare. You foiled everything, Countess Bella! Hmm, quite right. Next time, you ought to be a tad sneakier. I assure you I will be. Bella, look out! Go around to see Mr. Chambers and Mr. Knavey have reappeared with a sled covered in snowballs. Quick, after the Countess! Mrs. Sinclair, help me! Stand motionless as Mr. Chambers and Mr. Knavey pelt you in your frames with snowball. It's too much. However will we win this now? We must retreat for group. It isn't over yet. Mr. Sinclair takes you by the arm and steers you to a nearby bench. You crouch down just as an air their series of snowballs hits the wood. I know I should have picked bench, but I decided to choose something different. God forbid you make choices in a choiceless game. I'm sure someone will criticize it. It seems we've earned a brief respite. Yes, we're safe here. For now, at least. Not like she was going to die from a snowball. Mr. Sinclair takes your hand and gives it a small squeeze. You gaze into his eyes and the sound of battle fall away from you. Ernest, you must kiss me while we've the chance. Ah, oh, you're very convincing like this, with your eyelashes all dusted with snow. Then I'll ask once again, kiss me. Mr. Sinclair leans forward, his breath steaming in the chilly winter air. You impatiently close the distance, smelting his body into yours as your eyes flutter shut. Just as you begin to sink into the moment, he pulls away, a wry smile on his lips. <clears throat> as beautiful as ever. I wish we could just stay here, away from the chaos of it all. As tempting as that is, we have a reputation to uphold. I suppose we should return to the fray. We can't have the others thinking us cowardly. I bag a few additional snowballs and cradle them into the crook of your arm. One. Two. Three. You and Mr. Sinclair leap out from behind the bench, slobbing snowballs at Mr. Chambers and Mr. Knavey. One of yours hits Mr. Knavey in the face, and he falls back into the snow. Pugsley leads Bambi, chasing after Mr. Chambers and Mr. Knavey. Bambi headbutts Mr. Knavey as Pugsley menacingly barks at him. <coughs> ah, 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 ah. I've been compromised! Mr. Chambers abandons the sled to help Mr. Knavey to his feet, and Miss Cordelia seizes the chance to take the sled of snowballs for herself. Ah, not too threatening without your stockpile, are you? Bring it here, Miss Cordelia. I can make even more. The tide has turned in our favor. We must advance while they're distracted. You ready yourself to continue when another snowball smacks you from behind? You spin around to see Miss Constance. Standing a few paces away, packing another snowball. I will have my revenge. Backstabber. You should have left. Well, enough alone. Now I declare war. It'll be quite the easy battle to win. You can't let Miss Constance get away with this. She deserves a lesson. I think you're right, but I'll need a more advanced technique. <clears throat> I will use a giant snowball. A biscuit. You'll get this if you understand Team Four Star. A rope. We're we're playing a snowball fight. We're not going to hang her. Jesus. A giant snowball. You begin to gather snow into a large ball at your feet. How exactly is this more advanced? Just you wait and see, Mr. Sinclair. You continue amassing the snow until the large snowball is as large as your head. Huh, you'll never be able to throw a snowball that size. Your strategy has failed before it began. Oh, but I don't need to throw it. It's called rolling it. You heft the bulging snowball over your head and charge at Miss Chan Constance. She evades you for a few steps, but before long you drop the snowball onto her head. Ah, no! That's what you get for thinking you can best me. I see! That's enough! I give up! Miss Constance holds her hands up in surrender, and you relent your attack. As far as I'm concerned, this means I've secured a victory for the entire battle. It's quite a leap, after all of that. I've just landed 20 good hits. <clears throat> yes, Camspella, I believe your pride is showing. Pardon me, but who was responsible for Miss Constance's surrender? In my eyes, that's a victory. I believe it was a team effort. Though we should probably quit while we're ahead, given it's high time to return to Edgewater. A superb plan. Seeing as I'm uh, dripping snow, I, for one, look forward to thawing by the fire. 
You bid farewell to Miss Constance and Miss Cordelia, then make your way back to your carriage. Back at Edgewater that evening. Your whole household and guests gather to decorate the enormous tree in the foyer. It's finally beginning to truly feel like Christmas. Bugsy and Bambi curl up next to the fire together and start to doze off. <coughs> Miss Parsons and Sir Luke work together to wrap a garland around the banister while Miss Dally and her your grandmother fix candles to the tree's branches. Miss Dally, would you hand me another candle? I think we could use one here. Prince of Me talks to your brother at the edge of the room as Mr. Sinclair helps Percival sprinkle tinsel over the pine needles. Higher! Lift me higher! Hmm, where'd I go to first? Hmm, looks like there's four. I'm gonna go with, um... Yeah, we'll just go down the list. <coughs> you walk halfway up the stairs and grab the end of the garland, then help Sir Luke wrap it around the railing. Cannot wait to decorate my new manor for Christmas. Candles will be everywhere and every room shall smell of pine and cinnamon. You seem quite enthusiastic about the holidays, Sir Luke. What's not to be enthusiastic about them? I simply love it all, especially the snow. Is there anything more delightful? My mother always wished to give my brothers and I a Christmas like this. Perhaps now I can make that dream come true. Your generous heart never ceases to surprise me, sir. Here I'm thinking of snow while Sir Luke is planning a holiday revel for his family. <coughs> you tuck the end of the garland in and of itself, securing it around the topmost part of the stairs. We can finish up here, my lady. I'm sure you have other matters to attend to. Miss Dally and the... Uh, that was your Countess. Miss Dally offers you a long candlestick as you approach, and you accept it. Your eyes scan for a branch to affix it to. Miss Dally, I truly have missed you since the wedding. My dearest Bella, perhaps you can help me convince her to return and work at Edgewater's personal seamstress. It would be marvelous to have you here year-round. I'm quite flattered by the offer, but I simply cannot accept. My daughter is only uh, several hours away, but if I moved to Edgewater, Briar would surely move to Timbuktu. You may have a point. Briar loves you dearly, but she does prefer to have her space. Finish fastening the candle to the tree branch and take a step back to admire your work. Never mind you, the rest of the, these. I'll see to your other guests as well, my dear. No one else. Oh, okay. Okay, that popped up. Let's <clears> do <throat> Prince Amin. Stand beside Prince Amin at the edge of the room as Mr. Morrocaster and Viscount Harry recount the Christmas tales. You see, Prince Amin, we'll decorate the entire house tonight and leave it up until the twelfth night. Then all the greenery shall be taken down and burned to ensure we don't have bad luck for the year. What a peculiar custom. Everything here is so fascinating. I take it you are enjoying yourself, Prince Amin? Indeed. To think I'm celebrating my first Christmas. I could help. I would help decorate, but I don't even know where I should begin. I can think of something uh, you could help me with. You pull Prince Amin away from your brothers to a large wooden crate filled with decorations and pull a white angel from within. The Gabriel, angel Gabriel, guardian of homes against evil spirits, we place him at the very top of the tree. <coughs> you offer the angel to Prince Hamid and point him towards the ladder that stands beside the tree. He speaks as he begins to climb. This is something that Christianity and Islam have in common, for Gabriel is also an angel to me. Perhaps Christmas isn't quite as unfamiliar as I thought covers the point on the tree with the skirts of the angel's long robe and secures it firmly to the branches. Maybe you can find similar aspects than when I show you how to celebrate Ramadan Bayram. I imagine our faiths have more in common than we know. And it is true. As a person who has studied many religions, there is a lot of common. And perhaps, maybe people of religion should put aside their disbeliefs and whatnot and respect one another. And maybe the world would be a better place. Just saying. <clears throat> I wonder what else I might find a place for. You, Prince Hamid, descends the long last rung of the ladder and begins poking through the box of ornaments as you turn back to the rest of the party. Mr. Sinclair, Percival! You crouch at the base of the tree beside Mr. Sinclair, and little Percival collects some of the tinsel that has fallen from Percival's hands. Look what I did with the tinsel! It's lovely, Percival. Ah, this is the first time he's ever seen a Christmas tree. 
I'm not surprised. Neither Moorfield nor Edgewater would have had one if not for the German in my father's lineage. Oh, will you be having Le Réveillon? A big Christmas Eve feast like that is a French tradition, my boy. In England, we have the feast on Christmas itself. <clears throat> but perhaps if we have a German tree, we can also add a French feast to our holiday plans in the future. Really? You mean it? Ah, Miss Finley isn't going to like this. Nonsense. She will come around when she realizes she has two feasts to display her cooking prowess. Have you tried to cook two feasts in the span of 24 hours? No? Then shut up! You douse the small bits of tinsel over the bottom branches and sit back on your heels. Don't worry. We'll make sure the whole tree is covered. I'll be back to see what you've done. Soon the entire foyer is decorated from floor to ceiling, and you find yourself standing beside Mr. Sinclair as you admire your work. <coughs> Edgewater has never looked so festive. The tree isn't finished yet, Dan. You must have some trick up your sleeve, for I've never seen a more elaborate Christmas tree. Reach into your rectangle and retrieve the class ornament, showing it to Mr. Sinclair. It's your Christmas present. I thought we could paint it together and pass the time in each other's company. Bella, you always know just what my heart desires. I only wish my gift was for you was ready, but you will have to wait until tomorrow. <clears throat> and then perhaps we can pass the time more happily by working on this. Drag Mr. Sinclair to the parlor where Mr. Woods has set up a painting supplies. The two of you settle on the sofa and begin to work. Can you believe that our luck that we get to pass our first holiday together in the snow? The last three Christmases have been rainy and gray. I think any weather would be suiting me, as long as I spend Christmas with you. What makes the season so precious is spending it with the, the one you cherish most. Yes, it would be blistering hot, and uh, it would still be the most joyous of occasions as long as you were with me. And Mr. Sinclair paints the final stroke on the ornament. <clears throat> you ought to be a tree ornament artisan with handiwork like this. It is our handiwork. I would remind you, and now it's ready to be placed on the tree. Nearly so. It needs one final touch. Words to remember the occasion by. Soulmates. You captured my sentiments exactly. I return to the foyer and together and lump the, loop the ornament onto a branch. Mrs. Sinclair's hand lingers on yours and you gaze in each other's eyes, smiling. The rest of your guests gather around and admire the ornament. Oh my, it's beautiful. You must make one every year. Soulmates, it will make for quite a memory. A peculiar of a phrase, and wouldn't have thought of soulmates myself. In spite of the festive decorations and holiday cheer, I can't help but feel as though something's missing. I know. We'll sail, which I have no clue what the hell this is. Here, here. Is it truly Christmas without we'll sail? I think I can recall the Sinclair recipe that my grandmother taught me as a boy. It's been passed down since the early 18th century, and I can pass it on to Percival. Just as your grandmother did for you. I would uh, need help to get a crack, though. Maybe you could assist my lady if you're uh, a moment to spare. You find Sir Luke staring at the fireplace on the far side of the room. He looks up at you as you approach, attempting to read the flames. Heavens, no. I was thinking that we would, uh, we have not yet to cut the Yule Log. It's meant to spell, spell eel luck if we don't have one. Do you believe such superstitions? I never even had a Yule Log until the first Christmas I spent at Edgewater. It was the Earl who uh, believed not only that it would uh, protect the estate from eels, but that his version of the tradition would avoid catastrophe. My father taught you of the Yule Log. I, I can go out at once to find one. But I will need someone to hold the lantern, and it would be only right for the lady of the house to select it. I can tell you of your father's peculiar traditions. Just find me any time before the midnight if you wish to go. I sit back and look between the two men in the room. Hmm, what to do? So the real question is, is we are able to do either one? That is the real question, I guess we'll find out. However, <clears throat> um, since your father is no longer here, and he knows the recipe... I would like to find out more about the father, though, and his peculiar traditions. And hope that we can do the other one. You return to Sir Luke by the fireplace, you extend your hand toward the fire and shake your head. I think what this fire needs is a Yule Log. 
If you still have the time to go out, sir, I'd love to learn about my father's traditions. Fantastic. It truly wouldn't be an Edgewater Christmas without you logs. There are more than one. Follow me. I'll explain on the way. Sir Luke dons his hat, and you slip on your winter gear, and then follow him through the Edgewater grounds. The two of you trudge through the snow, and before long, Sir Luke pauses outside the stables. Wait here a moment. We can't go without an axe. Was it too much to hope for uh, the logs were just lying in wait for us? <clears throat> Alas, they do require some effort. Sir Luke ducks into the stables and soon returns with a large horned axe. I brought you out here, Bella, to kill you and take Edgewater as mine. Ha ha! It, my, it looks very martial and threatening. That's because this is a ceremonial axe, passed down through the ages. It is only used for cunning the Yule logs each year. I still would like to know why there must be one or more than one log. One is placed in the fireplace, but your father lived, liked to have an extra at hand to decorate the Christmas table. He called it the perfect centerpiece. We're going to put a log in the middle of the table. Your father's an idiot. <clears throat> the Earl entrusted me with a Yule axe last year. He showed me how to use it, and now I'll be the one to show you. This tradition is in full effect already, it seems. I must say that I wish I could have spent a Christmas with my father. I feel as though my father is with us now. Yes, I can almost hear his voice on the wind, wondering what wars will befall Edgewater without our traditional Yule logs. Bella! And then your father died again. Oh, wait. Still better than in Rise of Skywalker. You laugh about hearing them, but I remember those exact words. He shouldn't disappoint. We shouldn't disappoint him. <clears throat> well, let's away then. I'm curious to see what other traditions my father has in store for me. As you walk to the edge of the woods, Sir Luke rests the axe upon his shoulders. The night air is crisp and silent, save for the crunch of your footsteps in the snow. Sir Luke, I must ask, why did you decide to spend Christmas here instead of with your family? I know you're very close with them. Well, my family is very important to me. However, I had someone special I'd hoped to spend the holiday with. Oh, is that so? Is the special someone the horses, your new estate, a bucket of crap, Miss Cordelia? <laughs> Sir Luke tugs at his collar with a free hand and shuffles a foot in the snow. I'm a gentleman, Countess Bella, and a gentleman does not reveal such things. You pin him with a knowing look and sigh up at the stars. Of course, but perhaps this gentleman ought to be cutting a Yule log over at Hazel Vale Manor. Sir Luke smiles at your joke, but otherwise does not acknowledge it. As for my brother, Ezra returned home to our mother and Benjamin. But I'll have you know I am spending the holidays with family. <clears throat> I consider you and everyone here at Edgewater to be family as well. I'm certain the others would agree with that sentiment wholeheartedly, just as I always have. As you reach the woods, the rest of the noise of the state falls away, and you find yourself surrounded by the trees. Now, all that's left is to find the perfect tree for our Yule Logs. Well, the Earl always preferred a good, reliable oak tree. A Yule Log from an oak is meant to bring healing, wisdom, and strength. Eh, yeah, sounds solid. But um, <clears throat> That sounds like a fine choice. Well, it's certainly a traditional choice here in England, but in other countries... One might opt for a birch, which symbolizes new beginnings, or the willow tree, which is said to invoke desire. Let's cut down the traditional oak. As you said, he preferred it, and not to mention the oak sounds like him. He was one of the strongest and wisest men I had had the pleasure to know. A fitting choice. We are here to honor his traditions, after all. <clears throat> Sir Luke thoughtfully taps his axe and glances back to the trees. As the Lady of Edgewater, would you prefer to do the honors? I think you had better, Dan. Brother glances, gives you a smirk, and makes the first strike, sending splinters flying into the snow. Stand back, Countess. I'll make quick work of this. Sir Luke swings at the tree again and again until... Timber! The tree crashes into the snow with a loud thud. Sir Luke makes quick work of separating two logs from the rest of the trunk. We cut down a tree for two logs. Why don't you keep that in mind? We cut down a whole tree so the rest of it could just sit there. I believe our task here is complete. Shall we head back? 
<clears throat> yes, of course, but wait a moment. I just wanted to thank you for sharing a piece of my family's history with me. And also to say... <clears throat> Happy Christmas. We consider you family, too. Sir Luke, the doors of Edgewater will always be open to you. In fact, it doesn't feel complete when you aren't around. Don't worry, Countess Bella. I can never go too long without finding my way back. And of course, if you ever get homesick, your mother and brothers are welcome, too. <clears throat> Sir Luke hoists one of logs on his shoulder and rolls the other to you. We should return before we uh, freeze out here. You're right. We shouldn't keep the halls of Edgewater waiting. The house demands its Yule Logs. With a Yule Logs and ceremonial axe and toe, you and Sir Luke trot through the snow to Edgewater. <clears throat> when you arrive, you bring the logs to the dining room and set about decorating the first for the centerpiece. How do my father usually uh, like his centerpieces? Well, he uh, loved the look of a Yule Log with candles, so you can't go about burning it at the table. And I bet pine cones and holly are always welcome. The two of you arrange the holly candles and pine cones around the Yule Log. When you're finally satisfied, you step back to admire your handiwork. <clears throat> okay. We've done it. Mr. Woods peeks in and smiles at the side. Ah, splendid work, you two. I'll have it front and center for tomorrow's dinner. Thank you, Mr. Woods. I hope we were able to make my father proud. To truly do so, there's one thing left. The other log must burn in the fireplace throughout the 12 days of Christmas. <clears throat> well, then there's no time to waste. You follow Sir Luke to the foyer where the rest of Hedgewater's guests are waiting. You've returned. And successfully brought us a Yule log, I see. It seems I will get to experience another holiday tradition after all. You and your guests gather around the fireplace. You weigh the log in your hand, thinking of what to say. You carried out your father's holiday traditions with Sir Luke. May the Yule log cut from the strongest oak bring us healing and wisdom in the year to come. Here, here. <coughs> Toss the Yule log into the fireplace, the flames begin to lick at the wood. The foyer feels suddenly brighter, and you survey the rest of the party. It's not yet Percival's bedtime. Perhaps we could still teach him how to make the wasali. Guess we'll find out what wasali's. You saunter back over to Sinclair and Percival by the tree. He lifts Percival up to place an ornament near the top. No... No one's ornament shall be taller than mine. I think you're correct. The only angel, at the, only the angel at the top is higher. Ah, why don't we celebrate your ornament placement with a hot mug of wasol, Percival? Percival runs over to you and clutches at your skirts as he looks up with wide eyes. Yes, can we? Please, please. There's only one thing. I need the Sinclair family recipe to make it. <clears throat> well, if that's all, I suppose I can help. Uh, for the good of the Christmas, it'll be nice to have a piece of my family here for the holiday. Huzzah! What's all for? I don't even know what the hell it is, and we're cheering. You take Percival's hand, and then head to the kitchens with Mr. Sinclair. Where you find Miss Finsley baking orders at the sparking orders at the servant. Woods, take the next round of drinks upstairs. Smith, that goose won't turn. Countess Bella, what brings you downstairs when you have the festivities upstairs? I decided I wanted to make some wasol for the party. Your ladyship shouldn't have to stoop to something so low. I can make... Miss Finley, you've done so much for the evening already. Allow us to do this at the least. Miss Finley nods merrily, then signals for the rest of the servants to give you the room. Soon you're left alone with Mr. Sinclair and Percival. <coughs> what do you need to make the family with Saul, Mr. Sinclair? Well, we'll need cider, apples, brandy to begin. I found the apples! Pick up... What a good find, Percival. We'll have these stewing in no time. After not long at all, you pour the apple cider and brandy into a pot on the stove top. Mr. Sinclair lifts up Percival to help stir the pot's contents. <coughs> you know, Percival, I was at your age when my grandmother taught me to make wasol. You used to be my age? God help us, children. Percival has a point. It's difficult to imagine you so young. I don't often dwell on my childhood, but making wasol year after year was one of my favorite Christmas memories with my grandmother. And now her spirit is all around us. Can you feel it? 
I confess, I don't know what you mean, my lady. Do you feel it? A warmth, your grandmother's presence. <clears throat> I would wager it'll grow stronger and stronger as we proceed with the recipe. I think you must be feeling the warmth of the stove. I feel the warmth! You must feel it too! I think you're right, Percival. Mr. Sinclair just doesn't want to admit it. I... Nope. I'm, it's, it's, it's rather comforting that she's here, yes. Mr. Sinclair peers over the pot and nods to himself. <clears throat> it looks like uh, we'll be soon enough ready to, to add the apples. I'll have them sliced momentarily. Mr. Sinclair sits down the... Percival and begins cutting up piles of apples. Percival tugs on your skirt. How can I help? I want to be useful. Then stop tugging on my skirts for starters, you little shit. I mean, <laughs> I just have the task for you. You can pour brown sugar into the pot. I can't reach the bag. You lift Percival up in your arms and help him reach the counter. He picks up the bag and then eyes your pot. Be careful now, you don't want to. Percival loses his grip on the bag and accidentally dumps in several heaps of brown sugar. Much. Oh, no, 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 no! I ruined that! <clears throat> you set him down as he begins crying, and Mr. Sinclair kneel beside him and wipe a tear off his cheek. You haven't ruined anything, Percival. I also messed it up my first time, but my grandmother helped me fix it, just as you will now. Do not fret, Percival. Now we have a new tradition. We will simply double the wassail. You know to be more careful next time. Everyone stumbles and falls, so... And we have a new tradition. Percival sniffs, drawing his eyes. We... we do... what is it? <clears throat> Being a dumbass. Whenever we make a sale, one of us has to make a mistake. It won't be a proper sale without it. I like the sound of this tradition. What do you say, Percival? Can you help us keep it? Yes, it won't be done properly unless it's done improperly. The three of you continue making the wassail, you take turns adding in the apple, orange slices, tea, and finally the spice of... It smells so good, can I have some? Not yet, Percival. First, we must stir. I think the lady of the house should do the honor. I think we should all do it. Three of you each grab the spoon and stir the ingredients, mixing them all around and round until... It's done. Percival, be a dear. Fetch Miss Finsley. I don't wish to leave. I want to stay in hell. Do as your mother says! Little sir, you are helping. <laughs> it's a secret mission. In uncharted space. Does that mean make me a spy like Viscount Terry? Indeed. And your mission, should you accept it? Oh god, is most vital. Redfield's expression turns serious and he crosses his arms. I can do it! I am your man! It's up to you to get Miss Finley, Elsa. However, shall we distribute the wassail? I'll be back before you notice it. I'm gone! Laugh as Percival runs up the stairs. While well, he's gone, we should pour the wassail into the serving dish. Will you give me a hand? Can Mr. Sinclair take either side of the pot and pour the contents into a fine silver dish? A few apple slices here, cinnamon stick for luck, and viola. I still have no clue what the hell this thing is. <clears throat> It looks like you just uh, remember from my youth. Words cannot begin to express how much it means to share this with you and Percival. We truly are a family. Ernest. Next year, perhaps our family will be larger. Quick, I need a case before Percival returns. I would have it no other way. You maybe may no longer have blood relatives to share the holidays, but you'll have me, Percival, and the friends we've brought together. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm glad to partake in them with you. Just then, Percival returns with Miss Finley and Mr. Woods. I did it! I did it to asked! Very good, Percival. Mr. Woods, can you take the whistle up to for everyone? Right away, my lady. Back upstairs, you and Mr. Sinclair and the rest of your group gather around the Christmas tree with a cup of wassail. Following Sinclair family traditions, this only requires one more thing. A song. Oh God! Why, Jesus? Will you lead us, sir? Mr. Sinclair clears his throat and begins to singing. <clears throat> we sail, we sail all over the town. A toast. It is white. What? This makes no goddamn sense. So the rest of your guests join in. And our ale. It is brown. 
with a wassailing bowl. We drink to thee. And your guests and you raise your glasses and drink warm with sail, letting it heat your body. <clears throat> that hits the spawn. As everyone continues sipping their drinks, you stand back to observe the rest of the party. You stroll over to the trees. Mr. Woods lights the final candle on the tree. He steps back and admires his work. I think this year's tree is even more spectacular than last year. I'm waiting till the house burns down. I can obviously attest to that, but it's a marvelous sight to behold. Mr. Sinclair and your guests join you around the tree while Mr. Woods ensures everyone has a full glass. I cannot say I've had with sale before, but this is a new favorite of mine. It was made with love. And your screw up. <clears throat> you stifle a laugh as you share a look with Mr. Sinclair. As you culture drink, you feel the warmth from the Yule log radiate through you. It's like father's tradition. I do miss him, but at least it's like he's here in spirit. Thanks, Sir Luke, for ensuring we did not celebrate without the Yule Logs. It wouldn't be right without them. Countess Bella, I think we deserve one of your fabulous toasts. Especially when you look so festive as the lady of the house. <clears throat> here, here. Let us raise our glasses. Oh, if you all must insist. It's been several months since we've gathered under the same roof, and I appreciate having so many dear ones to celebrate Christmas Eve. Raise your glass, encouraging others to do the same. Let us toast to family. The holidays are about family and remembering that the connections we share are the most important thing of all. So here's to our family that is new. <clears throat> and that is old. And we cannot imagine things. Here's to family. Oh! Ah. As everyone drinks and cheers, you hear a knock at the door. It's your father from Christmas past. What have you done to my house? Whoever could it be? Well, those invited or present accounted for, are they not? Perhaps someone lost their way in the snow. Or maybe our guest has arrived early, Viscount Harry. I, um, should say... Scott Harry trips over his words as Mr. Woods opens the door and reveals... <clears throat> I knew there was a disturbance in the force. <sighs> Countess Henrietta. Not to worry, the festivities can commence now that your dear stepmother is here. Yes, they can. We can have a Wickerman celebrate. <laughs> we can burn you alive. It's Christmas with Countess Henriella, where you have a holly jolly holiday, where the ghosts of months past haunt instead. Do 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 do. So, long story short, as you can tell, I'm sick. If you couldn't tell, well, then you are not as observant as you think. Oh. First I had an infection, then I'm fighting, you know, through that infection, I got my pills, you know, I'm, I'm down to the last couple pills, and then my brother, about two days ago, started getting sick, <clears throat> so he's not feeling too good, and then today I wake up with, like, not as bad congestion, because I think my face is all congested out to the point of, like, it's going, nah, we're good, we're skipping this step, However, I have, like, a frog in my throat and a constant need to just, you know, give up. <coughs> you know, kind of. It's real fun. So, I know some of you are going to suggest tea. Check. Some of you are going to suggest orange juice. Check. <laughs> I have all these things ready on cue. Um... <laughs> Without further ado, <clears throat> I hope you all are having a good holiday season. Whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, hopefully you guys have a good holiday season. Hopefully you stay well. And um, <clears throat> once again, your continued viewership on this channel means a lot to me. It really does. And um, unfortunately for me and my brothers, we're not going to really have um, any Christmas, much like we did not have Thanksgiving, but, you know... That's 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 my life, you know. But uh, hey, <clears throat> by the way, 
I will be streaming on uh, Christmas as well as a few days before. As, as long as I don't get sicker, that'd be great. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I streamed last night. We've completed Star Wars Fallen Order. And um, plan on doing a couple special things for Christmas, like doing some giveaways and stuff with the games. So, yeah, stay tuned for those. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace out.